You're listening to the Breakaway Breakdown Podcast, where we bring you interviews with some of the top ropers in the country, news about what's going on in the fastest sport on dirt, training tips for you and your horses, and so much more. I'm your host, Casey Allen. Let's jump in. Okay, you guys, this is such a fun bonus episode. So I was in Guthrie, Oklahoma last week at the Lazy E Arena, and I had the chance to sit down with the champion of the 2022 Charlie One Horse BFI All-Girl Breakway Roping immediately after she won the event. Now, that champion is Josie Connor, which is even more fun because this episode is brought to you by Break by breakawayroping.com and Josie is one of our breakawayroping.com coaches so it just fit perfectly. Now Josie is only 18 years old but chances are if you're a fan of breakaway roping you've heard of this teenage phenom before. She's been roping with the big dogs from a very young age and she's won on stages at the WCRA events, youth events, she's won jackpots like the Spoke Invitational. She's just been a powerhouse from a very early age. Now, at the BFI, there was 105 girls entered, but Josie came out on top with her time of 12.59 seconds on three head to win the aggregate. That aggregate win was worth $10,000, but Josie got an additional $1,000 because she won the 18 and under youth incentive at the event also. And let me tell you what, guys, it was a very exciting roping. Um, They had older, hard-running cattle, and they run a long score at the Lazy E. Uh, the barrier was a foot under, so girls were nodding, having to wait a second, and then running their calves down the arena, and it was a horse race. Um, It wasn't just fast throwing out of the box. It was a really, really exciting event, and particularly, Josie came back high call in the short go, and she had a blazing 3.74 second run. She took her first available shot, and she got out like a bandit because a lot of us didn't know if she was clean when she ran her calf. So I can't wait to let Josie tell you guys about that, and I can't wait for you guys to learn more about her throughout this interview. Just ignore the machinery equipment in the background because they were starting to tear down the arena while I was sitting and talking to Josie um, at the media desk. So let's jump in. All right, Josie, so congratulations on winning the Charlie One Horse All-Girl Breakaway Roping today. I'm so excited to have you here on the Breakdown Podcast. So just walk me through your runs. Tell me about each round. I know this is a unique setup, so talk about that a little bit. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for having me on the podcast. I appreciate it. You know, the BFI, all the people involved, they, they've they been great, you know, for adding breakaway roping. And it really was a good roping. Um, the barrier was one under, so you had to give them a little bit. And the calves were not fresh, so they were running. They knew where the back end was. Mm-hmm. And uh, lucky for me, I, I kind of stayed stayed away from the ones you didn't want, you know. So I guess it was in the plans today to do good. I, was, I missed the barrier probably the most on the first one. Um, I was 4-1. Four one, I think, and then on the second one, um, I literally pulled all the way to the line. Um, we were like not running at the line, and I was four four seven in the second round, and I come back to the short round with an eight tenth lead, and I was way too close to the barrier for my liking. But I guess you know, it's just part of it. It's just reaction. I've done this so much, I just have a pretty good feel for it, and so. Um, it, it went my way today. It didn't break, so thank you to the cotton string for that. And I, I, it was 3.7. I think I won second in the short round and uh, ended up with, with the win today. Awesome. Yeah, we were all holding our breath a little bit that short <laughs> round, um, but you were awesome. You came back high call, and that's always a difficult situation to be in. So just tell me how you deal with that pressure and what's going through your head when you're back in the box when you're high call. Well, you know, for me today, it was a little bit of a different situation because usually when you're high call and – someone's 2-2 in front of you you want to be 2-2 but no one was 2-2 over here because of the setup and um I had a pretty big lead so today the stress was how bad do I want to miss the barrier and you know it didn't end up that way and so um I mean being high call you know you just it's it's like if you're open 20th call back or or first you know you just kind of gotta do your thing every time awesome and then you also won the 18 and under incentive today which is awesome so you know, talk to me about being such a young competitor with all the success that you've had. How do you stay humble, stay focused with all the distractions, you know, everybody following you around the media and everything. How do you just focus on your roping throughout competitions like this? Um, you know, well, rodeo is a humbling sport, so I have no problem staying humble because even if it's going good one day, it's, it's 
probably not going to go good the next. You know, it's just how it is. And, um, you know, I would say most of my confidence comes from the work I put in in the practice pen. And so when I get here, you know, I'm just focused on that job. And I've done it a million times, and I try not to put too much pressure on it because, like I said, it's just staying behind the barrier and roping the calf. And my dad tells me all the time it's, it's so easy, and I'm just like, oh, my gosh. You, you, you make it sound so easy, but then it's complicated. And so, um, you know, I just try to do my job every time. Awesome. And then you recently had a horse change also. So tell me about your new horse and tell me what it's been like getting with that horse. Well, I wouldn't call it a horse change because Tonka will forever be my favorite horse <laughs> alive. But um, I bought Tonka two years ago in, two, or in 2019, and he's pretty much had the wheels hauled off of him ever since then because he's been my number one and uh forever so um i left him home this week and it was his first break and i got this new horse dutch at the beginning of january and um he's he's really similar to tonka he runs pretty low and cowy and i really really like that and he score he takes my kind of score and he floats to the line and so um it's all i, I guess the cards felt good this year because i, I got him and uh I got to leave Tonka at home, and I'm taking Dutch to California this week, and um, we've had good success, so I'm, I'm really excited, and I'm really excited for the team of horses that I have. Awesome, awesome. Now, so I know you. I've seen you a bunch of places, but for the people that don't know you, tell me your backstory, where you're from, and kind of how you got started in the sport and how you came to be the dominating roper you are today. Um, yes, ma'am. I live in Iway, Louisiana. It's a really small town. I like Charles. Um, I've literally been doing this for as long as I can remember. Um, both my parents rodeoed. My dad roped in the PRCA. My mom um, rodeoed in high school now. She um, she quit out of high school and uh, started working for Pfizer Pharmaceuticals, and she's still with them. I think it's like 20-something years that she's been with them. So um, we do it every day as a family together, and it's just been such a cool journey to to meet so many people along the way because this is such a, a good industry with so many good people and uh, it teaches you so many life lessons and you know I'm really just so thankful to be a part of it I've got to, to grow with the sport and I think that's probably been the coolest thing for me I've got to see it in the pretty not from the beginning but when it started to bloom I kind of got to bloom with it and I got to see all the breakaway ropers up their game um I don't know Breakaway horses are my favorite thing to watch. They're so talented, and honestly, they have to be precise every single time, and so do you. And so it's just such a cool sport, and, you know, I really wouldn't change what I do for the world. Awesome. And then, so getting off Tonka, getting on Dutch, and coming to this kind of setup, how do you keep your horses working great in the practice pen, and how do you prepare for an event like this? Um, they they get minimal practice runs. So what I mean by that is I never practice for me when I rope rope on them at home now when I first got Dutch I did just to try to get with him and we made a couple runs in the practice pen you know during the week and stuff and but now that we're getting together and I'm getting a bunch of rodeo runs on him uh, we really score a bunch I bet I score two pins a day on them they get exercise and if I do anything we just run to the calf make them hold their spot drag their butt and they get walked back to the box and petted on <laughs> so that's about it Awesome. All right. So where do you go from here? What's next for Josie Connor? I'm actually leaving here and I rope in California. I'm going to the pro rodeos. I didn't, I'm 18 years old. I'm a rookie this year. So I didn't have any qualifications. One from last year's standings. I didn't get into Fort Worth, Houston, San Antonio. And that's been huge in the breakaway because the breakaway is not everywhere in the pro rodeos and the money's not always equal. And so at some of those it was. And so that's been huge. That's where you see the huge jump in the standings in the, in the pro world. And, um, you know, I'm so far behind. I don't know if a world title's um, in line for me this year, but my family and I are going to California just because, just for the experience. Um, they say they're really cool rodeos. Um, I think I'm really going to like the setup. Most of them are multiple headers. And um, so I go to Oakdale Saturday, and then Red Bluff starts the 14th, and Clovis starts the 18th, and then we come back home, and um, I think the last week of April was actually the rookie roundup in Fort Worth. So I'll get to go there as well, and then come back home and then the summer run starts and I don't exactly know what the summer run looks like for me yet. Um, I'm going to try to hit all the, the good pro rodeos without, um, you know, minimizing the ropings. I'm going to try to get to as many of these ropings, just like the BFI, you know, I, I want 11,000 today. Someone probably won eight behind me. There's so much money at the open ropings like this. And also I'm 19 years old, so I have two years left in the, in the junior ropings. And so I don't, I don't want to forget about those either because there is so much money in the junior ropings now. It's, it's crazy. And so I have a really exciting year ahead, and so I'm really, I'm really excited for it. 
Awesome, awesome. <laughs> and uh, did you happen to nominate for the WCRA today? Yes, ma'am. Sure yes. did. Yes, ma'am. For Corpus and I believe the women's finals. I'm not sure. My mom does. My mom handles the WCRA, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I did nominate for Corpus. Awesome. All right. So something I like to ask everybody: What is the best technical piece of roping advice you've ever been given in the roping arena? Um, <laughs> that's a hard one. <laughs> that's a really hard one. Um, angles are huge in the breakaway roping. Okay. So, I don't know. I would say anything with its angles of your horse or angles of your rope. Um, but the more you practice and the more that you work at it, the better it's going to be. So, I guess it just would be to work hard. I don't really know. <laughs> that's a hard question. Yeah. Okay. And then I'm going to ask another hard one. So, if you... You know, I like to ask the younger girls this especially. If you could look back and tell your 10-year-old self something now, what would you tell her seeing where you are today? Um, get into physical fitness sooner. <laughs> okay. um, physical fitness is huge in the breakaway open. Core strength is huge. Um, I probably I didn't start working out until I was probably 16 years old. And I, like, even now, like, when I'm in the gym or when I'm doing exercises, I can see the difference in my roping. And, um if I get off of it, I can tell. And so I wish I would have started sooner because I just would be stronger now than I am, mm -hmm. you know. So um, it, it definitely would be physical fitness. Oh, that's awesome. And it's not all about just being skinny. Like no. you said, it's building muscle. It, so just yeah, core just core and balance and it's core and balance. And it's, it's so crazy, you know, because it is all about angles to break my rope in. And so you have to be so precise. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah, we just launched a fitness series with Lindsay oh. Sumter on breakawayroping.com. And awesome. you've been a coach on there before, so maybe we'll have to hit you up next. Um, is there anything else you want to add today, Josie? You know, anybody you want to thank? Anything just, I mean, I know your head is spinning. You've been through a lot of interviews with $11,000 in your pocket. <laughs> well, I just want to thank the Breakaway Open Journal for being here. Um, the Breakaway Open Journal is really great for publicity of the Breakaway Ropers. And like I said, it is getting so big now. And everyone at the BFI, all the sponsors, you know, we couldn't be here if it wasn't for all of them. And so I just want to thank everyone who had a part in it. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Josie. I know we'll be hearing more from you in the future. Okay, you guys. Like I said, Josie has such a great head on her shoulders for 18 years old. And you can just see it in her eyes when she talks about roping, how passionate she is, and how she's always working to get better. I really love that about her. And that's why I'm super proud that she's one of our coaches at BreakawayRoping.com. In case you guys were curious about how the event, event planned out for everybody else, uh, Josie was first in the aggregate with that 12.59 seconds on three head. And then in second place was Cassidy Kelly with 14.3 seconds on three head. She won $6,000. Now there was nine holes paid out in the aggregate. You guys can check out the full results on breakawayropingjournal.com. And then I also want to give a shout out to Bo Peterson because she was 3.21 seconds in the first round and won $1,000 for winning that round. And in round two, Bailey Gubert came in first with 3.23 seconds on that run. For more of Josie's advice and roping tips, make sure to check her out on breakawayroping.com. And if you wanted to check out some workouts based on kind of the fitness tips that her and I talked about, we have a great fitness series with Lindsay Sumter on breakawayroping.com as well. I cannot wait to see you guys next week. Uh, we have a great episode planned. So hope you enjoyed this bonus episode. Thanks so much and have a lovely rest of your week.